Hey, you elopers, Janessa here with Simply Elopes, and I'm here for your tip of the week. This week, we're talking about something I'm so excited about, everything you need to know about planning your adventure elopement. My first tip is pick a place that you're jazzed about. The amazing thing about eloping is it can happen anywhere. Top of a mountain, lost in the forest, wherever you want to elope, you can. No limitations. So whether it's a place you've never been or a spot you've been to a thousand times, don't be scared to pick something you're pumped on. Once you choose a spot, you've got to navigate permitting. The process for applying for a city park or a national park varies by every single park. So it's super crucial that you get down and dirty with what their requirements are, how far out or how soon you have to apply, and what their requirements are, which can or cannot include insurance. So just make sure that you're getting the dirty on what the permitting requirements are. Fun tip. If you're hiring a photographer or officiant or a company like Simply Eloped in the area, they might be able to apply for that permit on your behalf, saving you that stress and that trouble. So when you're looking at a spot, if you've hired a local photographer, officiant, or company, be sure to ask, can you apply for my permit on my behalf? Do you guys do that for your Yes, we do. <laughs> Prior to locking your permit in, be sure you've picked the exact spot. For instance, Rocky Mountain National Park is a ginormous park, and there are, I don't know, 30, 40 venues just in that one park alone. So prior to applying for your permit, make sure you've got that perfect spot picked out so that you're indicating that on your permit. If you don't know where you want to elope in a park, feel free to reach out to a company like mine, Simply Eloped, or a local vendor. They will likely have some really amazing ideas that are perfectly in line what you envision. At Simply Eloped, we have an archive of photos and videos at most of our destinations. So if you're unsure on how to find a place or what you're looking for, be sure to reach out. We got you, boo. Another thing to figure out prior to applying for your permit is your guest count. Back to that Rocky Mountain National Park permit, in a lot of spots, they don't allow more than 10 guests. Once you're adding up you, your vendors, and your guests, that's really not allowing for many. So if you plan on inviting guests and aren't going somewhere super duper remote, make sure that you know what are the limitations on your guest count. Next up, be mindful of light. If you're going on a two hour hike to a super remote destination, you wanna make sure you're not hiking out or performing your ceremony in the dark. So be mindful of sunrise and sunset time on the day that you're eloping in the location you're eloping. So important. I highly recommend you calculate your hiking time. It's good to know how much distance you can cover in a particular amount of time and the distance that your ceremony location is. We at Simply Eloped have some destinations that are a full hour hike in, full hour hike out, or longer. So if you're not really accustomed to hiking, you might wanna consider somewhere that's next to a parking lot, which can be just as stunning. In addition to when considering time, you don't really wanna be getting eloped mid-afternoon. When the sun is direct, usually 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., no one looks good in that lighting that creates harsh shadows and just not flattering on anyone. <laughs> Unless you're in a forest or it's overcast, nobody looks good in harsh light. So I recommend when possible, just don't elope 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. This tip is a little bit controversial. Some of my favorite elopements that we've ever done, ever, 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 have been in rainstorms and snowstorms. So me personally, I would recommend don't be afraid of a little weather. Those snowstorms make for amazing photos and they're so special. Remember the time we got eloped and got caught in a snowstorm and our photographer was a super champ about it? Oh my gosh, I just love it so much. Part of having an adventure elopement is having an adventure spirit. So don't be afraid of a little weather. <clears throat> if you are hiking in, it's super crucial to figure out what you're gonna be packing in. Are you going to wear your wedding dress or are you gonna pack it in? 
You definitely need hiking boots. So do you wanna be wearing hiking boots in your photos? Probably not. Bring some wedding shoes. So whatever it is, snacks, water, map, shoes, dress, vowel booklet, make sure you are figuring out your pack prior to departing for your wedding. I would recommend at least a couple days in advance so that you're packing things in, packing things out, and figuring out what you're able to carry. Are you bringing champagne in your pack? That's gonna be a heavy lift. Champagne, water, you might have to choose. So just be mindful of what you're packing in. For your flowers, I highly recommend you just attach them to your backpack. You don't wanna be carrying that possibly five pound thing in your hand the whole way up. So figure out how to attach it to your backpack. Definitely don't forget water, hiking boots, bug spray, and sunscreen, the hiking essentials. If you're hiking out with vendors, they're gonna know where they're going, undoubtedly. So that alleviates a lot of stress from you so you can just follow them. If you've never been to this destination and aren't precisely sure where you're going, you might wanna bring a map and a compass. Your cell phone is not gonna work in those remote destinations. On the topic of your phone, it's possible that your phone isn't working for hours leading to your destination. So I would make sure that you are coordinating anything that you need to via email, phone call, or text prior to heading out for your ceremony destination. You won't have service when you get there. This one might seem like a funny one, but prior to leaving to a remote destination, check your car. You'll be shocked at how many ceremonies have been bludgeoned because we had a pop tire, oil run out, or they ran out of gas. So make sure that if you're renting a car or even if it's your own car, you're checking the oil, gas, and tires before heading out on a long trip. While it might sound super romantic to just head off in the wilderness, just the two of you for elopement, you're gonna be missing out on a lot if you don't capture it with photo and video. So my recommendation is to hire both a photographer and a videographer so that they can capture every single second of this magical day. Not only do you want to remember this day forever, but all of your friends and family who weren't invited would probably love to see how magical and special this big day was for you. So that's just another benefit to getting a photographer and videographer. You can share it with all of your loved ones. My biggest tip about having an adventure elopement is to have an open mind and an open heart. Things are gonna happen. Magical things like a rainbow or a snowstorm or a special animal showing up while you're exchanging vows. And some not so magical things could happen like you forget your hiking boots and have to hike in and wedding heels. So whatever it is, just have an open heart, an open mind and come with an adventurous spirit. So those are my top tips on having an epic adventure elopement. I hope they help. See you next week for my tip of the week.